This is the B-Link EQI 12, a lower mid-tier mini PC that sits squarely between entry-level Intel N-Series system like B-Link's own EQ lineup and more capable mid-tier machines such as the GMK Tech Nookbox M6 Ultra. In terms of raw performance, it fills that middle ground neatly. Where things get more complicated, its cost. With RAM prices climbing, systems like this and really any newly released mini PC are starting to feel the pressure. That shift has the potential to undermine overall value, especially when these new models are compared against older stock that was priced before memory and storage costs began rising. That pricing pressure forces a closer look at where mini PCs stand today. The EQI 12 provides a good case study for whether these compact systems still make sense as a cost-effective alternative to a traditional desktop tower for everyday computing, or whether rising components costs are beginning to erode that advantage. Let's get into it. It's the money. This is actually the second EQI 12 B-Link sent over for review. I'll explain why a bit later, but the unboxing experience was identical both times and very much in line with most mini PCs on the market today. You slide the box out of its cardboard sleeve, lift the lid, and the mini PC is sitting right on top, protected in a plastic sleeve. Under that, you'll find the user guide followed by the power cable and HDMI cable. The EQI 12 uses the same plastic enclosure as B-Link's EQ series, Sticking to a fairly standard Nook style form factor, it measures 126 millimeters square and 44 millimeters tall, making it compact enough to disappear on a desk or mount behind a monitor. B-Link offers the EQI 12 with four different CPU options, and the unit I'm testing is equipped with the Intel Core i5-1235U, a 10-core 12-thread processor made up of two performance cores and eight efficiency cores. The P cores have a base clock of 1.3 gigahertz and can boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. All cores share 12 megabytes of Intel smart cache, and while the chip supports a configurable TDP range from 15 to 55 watts, B-Link caps it at 35 watts by default. Graphics duties are handled by Intel Iris Xe integrated graphics with 80 execution units clocked up to 1.2 gigahertz. This configuration shipped with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory and a one terabyte PCIe Gen 4x4 NVMe M.2 SSD and includes a second M.2 slot for storage expansion. Wireless connectivity is provided by an Intel AX200 adapter supporting Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.0 5.2, perfect for potential Linux users as the Intel AX adapters are perfectly supported in Linux. One notable design choice here is the internal 85 watt power supply. There's no external power brick or wall work to deal with, which keeps cable clutter to a minimum and it doesn't affect internal temperatures. Up front, you get the power button, a 10 gigabit USB type C port, a clear CMOS button, a 3.5 millimeter headset jack, 10 gigabit USB type A port. Around back, there are two more 10 gigabit USB type A ports, dual HDMI 2.0 out ports supporting up to 4K at 60 hertz, a USB 2.0 port, dual gigabit LAN ports, and the AC power input. Once everything was connected, keyboard, mouse, and monitor, I powered on the EQI 12 and went straight into the UEFI, or at least I tried to. I ran into the same issue I saw with the first unit B-Link sent over. The UEFI screen was a corrupted mess of pixels and completely unusable. This is where I owe B-Link up partial apology. With the first unit, I installed Windows 11, ran updates, and started testing before ever checking the UEFI. During that testing, I noticed some visual artifacts and performance that was below what I expected from the CPU and occasional system freezes and crashes. When I finally opened up the UEFI and saw the corrupted display, I assumed I was dealing with a hardware problem, possibly a bad or corrupted ROM. I reported that to B-Link and they had me return the system for a diagnostic. After evaluating the unit, B-Link confirmed the hardware was fine. What they did find was a Windows update that had installed incorrectly and was responsible for the system instability I was seeing. When the second EQI 12 showed the exact behavior in UEFI, things started 
to make sense. This doesn't appear to be a hardware defect at all, but a display handshake issue. The mini PC struggles to properly negotiate display timing and color modes with my high refresh rate 4K monitor. That causes the bio screen to render incorrectly and can also lead to minor UI glitches in Windows until the graphic driver fully stabilizes the signal. With the first unit, my troubleshooting stopped at swapping HDMI cables and ports. This time I went further and connected the EQI 12 to a different monitor. As soon as I did, the UEFI displayed perfectly with no corruption at all. I later confirmed the behavior by reconnecting it to my original 4K display when entering safe mode or the base troubleshooting environment, which bypasses Windows display drivers and relies on firmware level display negotiation the same display corruption was immediately obvious. This ends up being a more niche issue than I initially suspected, but it's worth calling out. Users running high refresh rate 4K or higher resolution displays could run into similar problems when accessing the UEFI or early boot environments. But now that I could actually get into the UEFI, I started poking around to see how the EQI 12 was configured out of the box. The Intel Core i5-1235U does support adjustable power limits, but unlike a lot of more modern Ryzen systems, Intel doesn't make that especially obvious. On many Ryzen mini PCs, you'll see a simple power mode option right in the main screen. Performance, balance, quiet. Easy. Here it takes a bit more digging. That said, once you track it down, the EQI 12 is set to 35 watt power limit by default. That's basically a quieter, more conservative setup. You can change it if you want to squeeze more power and performance, but it's not a one click switch. And for this review, I left it exactly as is. Realistically, most people buying a mini PC like this are going to run it the way it ships, not dive into firmware menus, tweaking power limits. After a reboot, the system dropped right into the standard Windows 11 setup like most mini PC vendors these days. B-Link ships it configured with a local account, so you're not forced into signing in with a Microsoft account during setup. That's something I generally appreciate, especially because the Windows update process during setup can be unpredictable. I've seen that process take an absurd amount of time on some systems. If you do want to tie it to a Microsoft account later, that's easy enough to do once everything's up and running. Once setup was finished, I landed on a clean Windows 11 desktop. No extra junk beyond the junk Microsoft already includes. No mystery software running in the background and nothing sketchy installed. Graphics and drivers were already in place. Windows only needed the current month's updates and that was it. From opening the box to fully usable system, this was a relatively quick and painless setup. With the EQI 12 fully set up, I ran it through my usual benchmark suite and compared it against three groups of mini PCs, entry level Intel N series systems as a baseline, a same generation but higher power Intel option in the Geekcom IT12, and a handful of similarly priced Ryzen mini PCs that sit more firmly in the mid-tier. Starting with CPU performance, Geekbench 6 makes the EQI 12's place in the lineup perfectly clear. In single core, the i5-1235U scores a 2190. That's roughly 63% faster than the N350 in the Mini X Z350 and about 81% ahead of the N150 in the B-Link EQ14. In day-to-day -day terms, this is the difference between a system that feels snappy and one that feels like it's consistently a half step behind. Compared to the Geekcom IT12 with the i7-1260P, single core is close. The IT12 scores 2267, so it's only about 3.5% ahead here. Multi-core is where the EQI12 really pulls away from the entry level system, but also where it starts giving up ground to true mid-tier machines. The EQI 12 scores a 7766 in Geekbench 6 multi-core, which is about 91% higher than the N350 and more than two and a half times the N150, but the higher power IT12 posts a 9475, putting the EQI 12 about 22% behind, and the Ryzen system stretched that gap further. The GMK Tech M6 Ultra with the Ryzen 5 7640HS scores a 10,860, roughly 40% higher. And the Ryzen 7 systems in this chart are typically 60 to 70% ahead in multi-core. 
On the integrated graphics side, the pattern stays the same. In the Geekbench 6 GPU compute test, the EQI 12's Iris XE scores 11,193. That's about 80% higher than the N350 and more than three times the N150, which is a meaningful jump for general smoothness and light creative work, but the IT12 lands at 14,930, putting the EQI12 about 25% behind, and the Ryzen systems pull way ahead. The M6 Ultra scores 23,673, roughly 111% higher, and the Ryzen 7 models are in the 30K range, around 170 to 175% ahead. If integrated graphics performance matters, AMD's RNA based iGPUs are simply in a different class. For real-world workloads, I'll keep it simple. In Photoshop, the EQI 12 scores a 5079, which is about 130% faster than the N350, and it's about 7% behind the IT12. The Ryzen systems still lead here, with the M6 Ultra scoring 7889, roughly 55% higher. So the EQI 12 is very usable for photo work and general content prep, but the best performance per dollar is still on the Ryzen side. And just to tie this back to everyday use, the Procyon Office Productivity Score is solid. The EQI 12 scores a 5402, about 61% higher than the N350 and 66% higher than the N150. It's only about 9% behind the IT12. And while the Ryzen systems still lead, this is one of the areas where the EQI 12 holds up well if your workload is productivity first. Gaming results line up with everything we've already seen. The EQI 12 isn't built to be a gaming focused mini PC. The i5-1235U is a low power U series chip and the Iris Xe graphics are fine for lighter titles, but they're not set up for consistent performance in modern demanding games. Even at 1080p on the lowest presets, the EQI 12 ends up at the bottom of the charts, including below the Geekcom IT12. In Counter-Strike 2, it isn't even able to hold a 60 FPS average, which is a good real-world indicator of where this system sits in gaming. That said, it still works for casual gamers. Less demanding titles like Rocket League, Dota 2, Dave the Diver, and Brawlhalla are playable on this kind of hardware. For anyone looking for serious AAA gaming on integrated graphics, that's really where a newer Intel Arc-based iGPU in the core ultra systems start to matter. Performance charts and benchmarks don't tell the whole story with a system like this, however. In fact, some of the same limits that hold the EQI 12 back in heavier workloads are exactly what make it appealing for a lot of people. This is a low power, efficient, and very quiet mini PC, and that shows up immediately in day-to-day -day use. For typical productivity tasks, web browsing, office work, media playback, and general multitasking, the EQI 12 feels responsive while while sipping power and staying almost silent. Measured at the wall, total system power draw can briefly spike a little over 80 watts, but those peaks are short-lived. Under a sustained full load, it settles in around 60 to 62 watts. During more realistic productivity or web-based workloads, power draw usually sits in the 30 watt range, with occasional spikes up to around 70 watts when workloads get bursty. At idle, the system pulls about 20 to 22 watts. The one downside worth mentioning is standby power. With the system powered off, I measured a phantom draw of just over four watts. That's higher than you'd typically see from an external power brick on its own, and it's likely a trade-off of using the internal power supply. All of this low power behavior comes back to how B-Link has configured the CPU. The i5-1235U is capped at a 35 watt maximum package power with sustained multi-core loads settling closer to 17 to 18 watts. Even within those limits, the performance cores still boost up to their 4.4 gigahertz max and can hold clocks around 2.2 gigahertz under sustained load well above base frequencies. That power profile also keeps the CPU temperatures very reasonable, topping out in the low 70 Celsius 
obvious under full load. Unsurprisingly, that translates into excellent acoustics. At idle, the system measures just 35.1 dBA, and even under full load, fan noise only rises to about 36.6 dBA. In normal use, the EQI-12 is effectively whisper quiet, making it easier to forget it's even running. Now, in true YouTuber fashion, I buried the lead. These final charts are where things will fall apart for the EQI-12, at least at this exact moment in time. Looking at real retail pricing as of today, the B-Link EQI-12 is the most expensive system on the chart. That's also why I compared it directly against mini PCs that clearly sit in a higher performance tier. At its current price, the EQI-12's price to performance looks outright bad compared to the rest of the systems tested. But this pricing gap isn't gonna last. Right now, the EQI-12 looks inflated because it's the newest system in the lineup and reflects today's components cost. Even though it uses DDR4, demand has driven prices up across the board. Meanwhile, a lot of the competing systems in this chart are older stock still sitting on retail shelves or in warehouses priced based on memory and storage costs from months ago. In some cases, the RAM alone in these systems is now worth close to what the entire PC is being sold for. Eventually, that disconnect will disappear, and this is where I place the blame squarely where it belongs. Massive AI infrastructure build-outs have redirected memory manufacturing capacity towards data centers. When nearly 80% of global DRAM wafer allocation is tied to feeding AI workloads, the rest of the PC market pays the price. Desktop PCs, laptops, and mini PCs are all downstream of that shift, and as manufacturers burn through existing inventory, they're going to be forced to price new systems based on current reality, not last year's component costs. Larger companies like B-Link may eventually negotiate better bulk pricing than smaller players, but nobody outside of the AI space has the power of these companies. Until that changes, prices across the entire PC market are gonna keep climbing, so while the EQI-12 looks wildly overpriced compared to the competition today, that same $529 price could look like an absolute steal a few weeks or months from now once everything else catches up. As of right now, I can't recommend the EQI-12 strictly on price, but if and when the price to performance gap closes, this becomes a very solid mini PC. It's efficient, cool, and genuinely quiet, and it offers a clear step up from entry-level Intel N-series systems for heavier multitasking, productivity workloads, and lighter content creation or development, where those entry-level boxes start to struggle. At the end of the day, if you actually need a new PC right now, I probably wouldn't wait. This trend is probably gonna get worse before it gets better. I've already seen price adjustments on systems I reviewed recently like the Bosgame P3 Plus and others like the GMK Tech M6 Ultra are currently priced at about what the 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory kit inside them cost on its own today. <laughs> there are still a few deals out there, but they feel fragile. Every time inventory turns over, prices reset closer to current component costs, and those windows won't stay open for long. If this review helped you understand where the EQI-12 fits, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. If you want more deep dive hardware reviews like this, consider subscribing to Elevated Systems. And if you've already seen prices shifting where you live, or you've picked up something before that next increased hits, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.